Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Watana English Service. Please stand for a moment of silence in tribute to King Thailand's King Pumi Pon. Call to worship. Please be seated. Call to worship. Psalm chapter 19, verses 1 to 4. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Hymn of preparation, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Please stand. Oh, yeah. 
Please be seated. Opening pray. Gods of grace, you have given us mind to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Call to confessions. Children of God, I am speaking these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is a turning sacrifice for our sins, and not for our only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please take a few minutes for your personal confession. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will for forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Exhortations and thanksgiving. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have won for us, for all the pains and insult which you have borne for us. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Intersections pray. Rule the hearts of our country and all other in authority, that they may live in peace and harmony and walk in the way of truth. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and defend all who strive for our safety and protections and shield them in all dangers and adversities. Hear us, good Lord. Grant wisdoms and insights to those who govern us and guide our country to the right path. Amen. Let us pray the Lord, pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name, name your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our, our debts as, as we, we forgive our, our debtors, and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the, the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Watanai English Service. This is a time, this is also is the, mo the moment for Thailand to pass through all the sadness, but we know that God will take us to the right path and will protect us. So then, everyone, please pray. Also, like if you are from internet, from um, other countries, please keep our countries in your daily pray. And also welcome Ajahn Stacy and David to be with us today. And also welcomes all of you to our service. And uh, last Wednesday. Uh, our church has a chance to visit Ajahn Paul Smith and, uh, in the new building. And also today, you will see his pictures, and also you see another pictures. So 
This is his drawing, his painting. You can see that he um, get improvements a lot. So now he starts to paint something. And also he has some video clips that would like to share with all of you. October, gonna say Psalm 23. Three. The Lord. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He restores my soul. He leaves me in the past. He is the past of righteousness, or His name's sake. Follow His walks. In the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I dare and test my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Holy goodness and mercy. Sorry, he, he prepares, he prepares, he says, he's beside on this again. The disabled before me in the presence of my enemies. Anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Glory and, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will, will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. There you go. You want to bless all of us? Thank you. Everybody in the church, we have very praise gate to God for all one of us who are following him fearfully. <coughs> Thank you. Praise of the best friend. Thursday, 13th of October. Thank you. Okay, you can see like even he cannot be with us in, in person, but his heart is always with us and he always wants to share the word of God from the Bible and you can see like this is the miracles of the Lord for the persons who have the brain damage, but the thing that he remember is the word of the Lord. So please keep him in um, your prayer and also he is the great example for the good servants of the Lord. Um, and after the service, today in the Thai service, if you can stay, we will have some um, short memorial service for the kings of Thailand. So then please, and, uh, and it will be after the Thai service. So then if you get a chance to stay longer, please be stay. God bless you. And today we have um, one anthems, and the song is I Wow to My Country.
them that know we may not counter armies we may not see her king her fortress is a faithful heart her Today's scripture reading is from 1 Timothy verse, chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of, your inter- take hold of the internal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The sermon today is by Ajahn Stacy Sherrill, a missionary from the U.S. and a teacher at Rema Bible School. The topic is on fight the good fight of faith. Good morning. We just want to make sure that we continue to keep Thailand in our heart and our prayers at this time. I know uh, David and I have called our own families in the U.S. and, and they are also praying for this country. I want to talk to you today about fighting the good fight of faith. God calls us to fight the good fight of faith. If we know that we're called to a fight, we know that we have an enemy. But God calls this a good fight. And the only good fight is the fight that you win. So God is calling us to a good fight. I want to make sure before we talk about that fight and before we talk about that enemy that we fully understand faith. I looked up that word in the dictionary, the word faith, and it said complete confidence in someone or in something. For us in here, that is complete confidence in God and complete confidence in his word. In scripture, many times faith and belief are used interchangeably. This is not just the history book for us. When we talk about the Bible, it's not just a book of stories. For us, it is the Word of God. It is the very Word of God to us. And that is where our faith must be based. Our faith has to be based on the Word of God. In fact, we cannot be in faith unless we know the will of God for our life. Of course, Jesus always puts it best in in Matthew 22, he is having a conversation with the Sadducees and they are arguing with him about some things and he says in verse 31, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? I love the way Jesus says that, reminding the Sadducees but also reminding us today, these words that we read, it's what God is speaking to us. So when we read our Bible, when we sit down with him and we study, we are this close to the mouth of God. He is speaking to us, and he is one that we can certainly have complete trust in. And his word is something that we have complete trust in, full faith in our God and in what he tells us to be true. When we are in faith, 
that means we have grabbed a hold of his word with our whole heart, not with just our mind, not that we hear the word of God and we reason it out and we think about it, but we hear the word of God and it goes in our heart. We have heart belief. We have heart faith because our God has spoken. What we hear him say, we believe, that settles it for us. No circumstances move us. No people move us. Only the word of God. That is a picture of faith for us. I want to look at someone that we know very well, the father of faith, Abraham, and look at a, a picture of him in scripture when he was in that kind of beautiful faith. In Romans 4, verses 19 through 21, it says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. This is a picture of beautiful faith. God had made many promises to Abraham in Genesis, but Abraham finally says to God, you're promising me all of these things, but I have no children. I have no one to leave all of this to. The only heir in my house is a servant. But God tells him, I will make you a great nation. He has him look at the stars more than he can count, and he said, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed God. He heard the promise of God. I told you our faith must be based in the word of God. He heard the word of God, and it says he did not waver in unbelief. Abraham didn't think about his body. Abraham was almost 100 years old. He didn't think about himself when he heard he would be a father. It says he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was only 10 years younger than him, certainly past the age of bearing a child naturally. He considered none of that, the word tells us. He did not waver at the promise of God. It says he gave glory to God. He was so fully convinced that God was able to perform what he had promised that he gave glory to God before Sarah ever came to him and said, I'm pregnant. He gave glory to God before he ever saw or held Isaac. He was fully convinced when he had the word of God. That was all he needed. It will be the same for us. In fact, I'm going to tell you the greatest enemy to your faith will be a lack of knowledge concerning the word of God. If we do not know the word of God, we do not have faith. We have nothing to have faith in. I want to look at Psalm 103 because there's so many promises here that if you have not been in the word, today is a great day to start. <laughs> Amen? It is never too late to get into the word of God. In Psalm 103, David is reminding his own mind. He is saying, bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. And he's going to list some benefits, some promises to us. He says, who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, and the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Amen? These are all promises of God. These are all things that we can have absolute faith in, completely, fully convinced that the one who made this promise is also able to perform it. So I told you that the greatest enemy to our faith will be not knowing the word of God. 
but I want to make sure that we take a look at someone who was in the actual fight, the fight that we are called to, the good fight of faith, and look at some other enemies that, that will come against the Word of God. So turn to Mark 5, and we'll read verses 21 through 23 just to start out with. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the, to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. This is Jairus. He is said to be a ruler of the synagogue. But so much more importantly, right now, he is a father. And he has come looking for Jesus. We know Jesus is the Word made flesh, the Apostle John tells us. So Jairus comes looking for the Word of God. And he is not being overly dramatic. He falls at the feet of Jesus and says, my daughter is at the point of death. We're going to read on and find out that this little girl is just 12 years old, and she truly is at the point of death. But Jairus makes such a powerful statement of faith. He says, come, lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. He is fully convinced at the feet of the Word of God. Fully convinced that if Jesus will come lay his hand on his daughter, she will be healed and she will live. I'll keep reading on. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. This is another woman in faith. She heard about Jesus. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? If we're not careful, if we are just reading the Bible, and not considering it to be the very Word of God, we might just move on to this woman's story. Don't ever forget, Jairus is standing there. He has already fallen at the feet of Jesus, made the statement of faith, my daughter will live if you lay hands on her. It says Jesus starts to walk with him, and this woman comes up and touches Jesus' clothes. So all Jairus knows is Jesus stops walking, turns, and says, who touched me? I don't know if maybe I'm not Christian enough, <laughs> but if I were Jairus, I would say, I don't care who touched you. My daughter is at the point of death. We need to hurry. Sometimes the passing of time can be a enemy to our faith, that we have the Word of God, but time starts to pass, and maybe we begin to waver in unbelief. We cannot. God does not change. His Word goes forth. It does not come back to Him void. It sets out and it accomplishes what He pleases. We stay in faith. We fight the good fight of faith, and that is to hold on to that word that we know we've received in our heart from God. But Jesus doesn't pass anybody in faith by. This woman reaches out to him in faith, and power 
goes out of Jesus. Jesus doesn't pass people up that call out to him. He stops for everybody that calls on his name or reaches out for him. And he certainly stops for this woman. She tells him the whole truth, the word says. And he leans down to her in verse 34, and he says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your affliction. Verse 35, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? I cannot imagine what went through J. Iris's head in that moment. Jesus stopped to tend to this woman, and in that moment, people come from his home and say, it's over. It's too late. Sometimes people can be an enemy to our faith. The words of people are nothing up against the word of God. We are not moved by anything but the word of God. Jesus, in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. The only thing that will bring us back into full confidence is another word from God. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to tell you, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Jesus spoke to him again, do not be afraid, only believe. They go to Jairus' house. And it's so interesting to me that Jesus only takes with him Peter, James, and John. And when they get to the father's house, everyone is weeping and wailing. Of course, a 12-year-old girl has just passed. But Jesus says she is not dead. She is sleeping. The people ridicule Jesus. Of course, they cry louder. Jesus puts them all out. I think that's interesting. Jesus removes all doubt. Jesus removes everyone speaking against the word. He removes all fear, all unbelief, and he goes into the house with Peter, James, John, that little girl's father, and that little girl's mother. And Jesus raises her from the dead and returns that little girl to her parents. It absolutely matters what we believe. It absolutely matters that we fight the good fight of faith, that we grab hold of the Word of God with our whole heart and nothing moves us not time passing, not what people tell us different, and not the enemy, not the devil himself that comes as the deceiver, as the confuser, as the accuser. We are not moved by anything but the Word of God. I love when Jesus raises someone else from the dead. He raises Lazarus from the dead, and he tells his sister Martha, he says, roll away the stone, and she said, no, Jesus, He's been gone four days. And he says, didn't I tell you, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. If we believe his word, we will see the glory of God, the power of God, the authority of God in this life, <laughs> in this life and the life to come, we will see the glory of our God if we believe. 
I want to tell you today that if you have not trusted in God's Word, your walk with Him will start in faith. That is the only way to become a child of God that you believe in your heart that God sent Him. He died for our sins and God raised Him from the dead. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. To walk this walk with God is not even difficult. Jesus said so few words to Jairus, but the miracle was amazing. He said, do not be afraid. Only believe. And then he walked with Jesus. Jesus does all of the work. We are only called to believe, and we are called to fight the good fight. We are called to stay in belief and then walk with Jesus. If you have not committed your life to him today, my husband and I always stay after to fellowship, and, and we would love to share more of the word of God with you. My word <laughs> won't, won't do you any good, but his word it will give you everlasting life if you believe. All of this is in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ajahn Sherry, for such a um, good message. Um, now we have the offertory. Matthew was Matthew chapter 6, verses 12, 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and women destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and women do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will, will be also. Offertory Offering him who is on the Lord's side, please remain seated.
and sing doxology together. you heavenly father that you are our god that we are your people we thank you for your word lord we thank you for your comfort and your peace especially at this time lord pray for the country of thailand and for its people thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us in jesus name amen mm -hmm. 